and welcome Wendy. Hello everyone and welcome to session six of Coldwell Bankers Virtual Education Expo. I'm Wendy Crane, Coldwell Bankers Vice President of Learning. Our first broadcast in this series was on March 26th and since then twice a week we've been working hard to make sure you're being provided with the information you need to position yourself as a trusted advisor to your clients who are looking for direction in an uncertain world. Since then we've had almost 30,000 agents, managers, brokers, and owners come together to learn and to share. I know I speak for the entire team when I say the responses we've received from all of you through words of encouragement, hope, and resolve reach far beyond anything we could have imagined. Watching you spring into action, spreading kindness and knowledge in an effort to keep America moving will go down as one of the most memorable times in my professional career. Our initial plan was to run this series in six segments, which would have made today's segment our final broadcast. However, after seeing the responses from all of you and talking to our agents and leadership, it was clear we needed to keep this series moving. However, uh, we believe twice a week would be hard for all of us to sustain, especially once life gets back to the new normal, whatever that is, um, which we are all hoping will be very soon. But after much thought and deliberation, a decision was made to broadcast our virtual education expos the first Thursday of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time starting in May and running through the remainder of this year. Each month, we will bring you a new topic designed to help you take your business to the next level. If today's the first time you're joining us, we have a vast audience that includes not only Coldwell Banker affiliate and company-owned agents, but we've welcomed real estate professionals from across all brands to join in. Because as an industry leader, Coldwell Banker believes each one of us plays an integral role in keeping America moving. As always, you can submit your questions by using the Q&A button in the upper right hand corner of your screen. We will stop twice today at the halfway point and again towards the end of the session to answer your questions. Questions that do not get addressed as part of our live event will be answered later and posted on our blog at blog coldwellbanker.com along with the session recording and the materials. Keep in mind due to the overwhelming responses we've been receiving, there may be a slight delay in posting the answers to your questions. And now it's time to put the spotlight on our agents. The Gary Lanham Group in Florida partnered with Storks Bakery and Coffee House to deliver bagged lunches to the emergency room at Holy Cross Hospital in appreciation and support of our healthcare workers on the front lines. Megan Hardin Griffith with Coldwell Banker Sky Ridge Realty in California was moved to action after she had to drive 45 minutes to find baby wipes. She's spreading kindness through her community by supporting a diaper and wipes drive for mom and dads in need. They are delivering baby care packages freshly wiped down and sanitized right to your front door. Todd Coughlin of Coldwell Banker Distinctive Properties in Colorado used social media to challenge our thinking by posting a thought-provoking podcast focused on the opportunities that are all around us despite what the world may look like. Thanks for joining us in the quest to never stop learning. Coldwell Banker Prime Properties in New York posted a touching video, a montage of thanks, as agent after agent shared their gratitude for our first responders who are on the front lines battling this for us every single day. Thank you to Coldwell Banker Prime Properties and thank you to all of our first responders. You truly are our heroes. Our final piece of good news for today comes from Kelly Higgins, a sales associate with a Fairfield, Connecticut sales office. Kelly shared a positive and encouraging message on what it took to become one of the first sales associates in her office to virtually navigate almost the entire sales process. Kelly's experience was shared via News 12 in Connecticut. Today's topic, Investing in You, is brought to you in collaboration by the studio and Coldwell Bankers Learning Team. Let's go ahead and meet today's panelists. Today we'll be hearing from David Marine, the Chief Marketing Officer for Coldwell Banker. David has been in real estate serving the brand for 18 years. Alongside David, we have Jan, Jan Loomis, Vice President of the Creative Studio. Jan has been in the industry for 27 years, the last 24 of which are with Coldwell Banker. And finally, we have two of Coldwell Banker's top agents when it comes to branding, Sean Carpenter 
and Jessica Edwards. Sean comes to us from Coldwell Banker King Thompson in Ohio with 22 years of industry experience, 18 of which are with Coldwell Banker, and Jessica hails from Coldwell Banker Seacoast in the Carolinas. Jessica has spent her entire 15-year career in the business with Coldwell Banker. A big welcome and thank you to our panelists. I'm telling you guys, this session is going to be full of powerful and practical tips to help you solidify your brand. And with that, I'm going to pass the ball to David Marine. David, what would you like to share with us today about branding? Thanks for that opening, Wendy. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about, and you are in for a real treat with these people that we have on the panel. But when you think about branding, one of the first things that pops into your mind is a logo. And I found this really interesting when a recent study was done with some of the most popular brands out there today, asking them to draw that brand's logo. Here's an example of Starbucks. And while Starbucks has had some logo changes over the year, you can see on the right that not everyone can get it exactly right. And the issue is that no one has confusion about what the Starbucks brand is. They just may not know all the fine details of the logo, but they know what that brand stands for. And that's because a brand is so much more than design. David Ogilvie, who is the father of advertising, he wants to define branding as a brand is the intangible sum of a product's attributes. And I think that is what you're going to take away from today, this afternoon, from our panelists on what are the keys to building your brand that go beyond just a simple logo and design. So we're going to give you some four keys. Let's start with key number one. And the first tip is to define your message before you do anything else figure out what it is that your brand stands for. We're gonna start with my good friend, Sean Carpenter here today. And Sean, thank you so much for being with us today. David, thrilled to be here and uh, great hanging out with Jan and, uh, and, and Jessica as well. It is, and uh, too bad we're not all together in the same room, but we'll do this virtually anyway. But when I think about Sean Carpenter, I think about the brand that he stands for. I don't think of a logo, I don't think of a design, but I think of a motto that you live and embody every single day, that is to build relationships, solve problems, and have fun. Tell us where that came from and how that started. Sure, happy to, David. You know, I, when I got in the business 22 years ago and I watched the, the fast pace of the business around me, I watched what agents were doing. And, and you know, when you come out of licensing school, you're licensed, you want to start your business, and they say, you got to get contracts, you got to get closings. And it was so overwhelming. And then when I slowed down and watched what agents were doing, I realized that in order to turn customers into clients and take clients from the contract to the closing table, there was really three things that, that you need to do. You need to build relationships. And that's either a new relationship with someone you've never met or deep in a relationship with someone that you've known for years. You had to solve problems. And whether they're real estate related problems or not, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're solving problems every day, when people have a real estate problem, they're going to think of the person who's good at solving problems. And you had to have fun doing it. And so yeah, I said to myself, if I focus on those three things, David, and I really believe if every agent that's watching this focuses on those three things, build relationships, solve problems, and have fun, that the contracts and the closings will take care of themselves. And so whether I've been an agent, a manager, the director of training, and now as a national speaker and back to actively selling houses here in Columbus, when I lay my head on the pillow, David, I, I ask myself this question, did I build relationships today? Did I solve problems today? And did I have fun today? And if I can answer yes to those three things, I'm convinced everything else is gonna, gonna take care of itself. That is a fantastic credo to live by. And anyone who's been through a real estate transaction knows you want to be with the person who knows how to solve problems. And that is certainly uh, something that you do. Let's switch over to Jessica. Jessica Edwards, I've known you for about 15 years now, which is basically your entire career in real estate. And Coldwell Banker has always been your brand. Talk to us about why a brand's value has matched your value in, in building your team and why that was so important. Jessica, you may be on mute. Sorry about that. Thank you, David. Super excited to be with everyone here today and share with you. Yes, I've spent my entire real estate career with Coral Banker, and it's been an amazing experience. You know, we really believe, as far as our team goes, that um, we are a really big, just like Sean said, on relationships and how important those relationships are. Um, and we, you know, our team is a very tight knit team. We 
you know, we, we would say our family is family, our team is family, and our clients are our family. And so we take that approach through every single process and through everything that we do as far as all of our branding and marketing to make sure that there's synergy with that. And it's very, very important to us. Um, the other thing is that we really like to say that, you know, Coldwell Banker is our brand and our specific branding that we do is really the image that we're putting out there. So it's the image that we're putting out there in the community that affects that reputation and so we we believe in that very very much i love that uh and you've used that for a number of years about how you're with a brand and then you have your own image and the the concept of family if anybody who has run into you and met your team that family element is not just something that talk about and sounds like a good a sound bite but it's something that you guys truly embody every single day. Now, Jan Loomis is someone who embodies serving agents every single day because she's working with them every day of the week, 365 days a year. And Jan, as part of the, as the director of the creative studio, been working with agents every single day and helping them design and define their marketing, how often should their values, their message impact their actual tangible marketing? Yeah, David. So I oversee Design Concierge, a platform that is dedicated to agents' personal branding. And when you first visit Design Concierge, you'll see on the front page, the first thing you see is be you. We build your brand, you make it your own. So as far as your question, as far as brand and core values, I personally believe that we are all CEOs of our own companies. So to be in business today as agents, our most important job is to be a head marketer for the brand called you. So defining your brand is really the work you do to make who you are and what you do known to potential clients and customers. So we have agents um, every day, like you said, we actually have about 150 per week coming to uh, work with us on our um, Design Concierge platform. We have agents that come and some of, them, some of them have a very clear vision in mind of what they want. Many of them bring samples of other logos and brands that they like. And often with other agents, they have no idea where to start. So our job is really to help them define their brand. So I want to mention real quick, because I know we have a varied audience, um, Design Concierge is only available to the Cobble Banker Realty agents right now, but I'm actually working with Liz Geringer to pilot some to pilot the um, Design Concierge platform for the affiliates so we can get that up and running here in the, in the near future. So right now, I'm currently working with Andy Moore from our Denver company. I want to shout out to Andy. She's um, on the line listening as well, but she bought one of our newest packages, which is called a Disruptor Package on Design concierge and it's one of the two newest products that agents can select and it bundles a set number of assets together for a more affordable cost for our agents so we are working with andy to design her logo her e-signature her in-touch headers her business cards as you can see it's a very classic design and reflects the image that that she portrays to her clients and customers and so another happy customer alex pink from our cambridge massachusetts office has a distinctive look and color guess what pink she incorporated pink throughout all of her marketing from her custom logo to her business cards to her personal brochure. It's very tasteful, strong, and consistent. And this brand just says Alex. And if you've ever met Alex, she also echoes Jessica's um, when she made the statement that the brand is her, the Cobble Banker is her overall brand and she's the image. That's exactly what Alex also wanted to portray. So we wanted to make sure that the Cobble Banker brand was um, on all of her materials prominently, but that her own personal look stood out. So she's getting ready to actually apply this brand to t-shirts, um, bags. So if you're in Massachusetts, hopefully you run across her and you'll get a bag or a t-shirt or a mug or something. But this is just some examples of what we do and work with our agents to help their personal brand to come alive. So I just wanted to, to talk about a couple things here when we get started. Back to your original question. Question, David. Um, we start by working with agents and feel prom really prominently that for your real estate brand to be great, it must be three things. It must be authentic. Don't just say who you are, be what you are. Differentiating, know your secret sauce and leverage it. Be relevant, offer something that your audience wants and needs. Then our team of talented design, designers and copywriters, we work with you to help define your brand. We ask a number of questions to kind of figure out what 
who you are and, and how you want to portray yourself. We ask, you know, do you like initials in your logo? If you're starting from a logo, what type of logo do you like? Like what colors do you like? What three brands do you love and why? How would you best describe yourself? These are just a few of the questions that we help our agents really define their message and their brand. So for us in real estate, I think it's simple. The more time you spend on building your brand, the less time you ultimately spend on selling yourself. So right now, while our business is on pause a little bit, it's a great time to build your brand or refresh your brand. So I, I'd like to say at Design Concierge, we are open for business. I love these three points here, authentic, differentiating, and relevant. They're all important, but the first one of being authentic, I think, is, is key. So let's, with tip number one on defining your message, let's wrap up some takeaways for everyone. So take a piece of paper and a pen. Yes, let's use some actual hard, tangible products and define your brand and your message in five words. Just five words can be sentences, can be individual words. Then ask four other people to do the same thing. So that way you're finding where are their similarities and where are their differences. How can the company that and the brand that you're with align and complement what you're doing? I think both Jessica and Sean touched on that as well. And then question what makes your message unique? What makes it different? What makes it stand out and that you're not the same thing as the person who's doing business right next to you? So those are some takeaways for tip number one, of define your message. Let's go to tip number two. Tip number two is uh, my personal favorite to keep it consistent. And there's definitely an association with building trust with that brand consistency. Jessica, let's start with you on this one. You're on a variety of different platforms out there, but it all looks and feels consistent. What are some tricks that agents can, can learn from you on how to make that a consistent message across their platforms? Sure, so David, I totally totally agree with with that statement about consistency and it's something that we spend a lot of time on and that we really try to make sure that across everything we do as far as you know website marketing materials listing you know materials and then social media that it all has a consistency and the same feeling to that brand and that image that's put out there um it's amazing to me it sounds it sounds very simple and sort of obvious but um it's amazing just you know when you see different even seasoned agents and you see see um, you know different different logos or different fonts and different colors and different things like that so by being consistent in the colors that you're using the font that you're using and just consistency through all channels not only social media but in print and things as well you're able to really um, stand out so much more and I think that that's something that we've done a really great job with and it's it's very noticeable in the community to where the color the logo the font, you know all that it really stands out and so I think this is also you know Jan mentioned a great time while you're home or not in the office or not as busy to really go through all of your your marketing materials go through you know what you're using and and, and what different social media platforms and things online and making sure that it has the same consistent look because that's really going to help that brand you know in an image stand out to people and sort of keep you top of mind it's really important it is and it, you can definitely see it across of all of your platforms and Sean uh, you know I think we engage with each other across a variety of different social platforms on a regular basis whether it's Twitter Facebook uh, or your blog or whatever you have some tips on how to keep consistent and even a consistent message that you use in listing presentations. Yeah, you know, I think when it comes to consistency, which Jessica does a great job on her video series, is just make it simple, right? You talked earlier in the, in the tip number one, David, about make it something simple that you don't forget, build relationships, solve problems, have fun. I love to talk about the five T's and I can talk about these from when I was an agent, when I was a manager, and when I was the director of training, because I think it applies across all levels of our business, but especially for the people watching, David, on their next listing presentation, when they're when they're asked by the seller, why would I pick you and Coal Banker? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, it's because of the five T's. You know, the same reason I chose to join Coal Banker is the same reason why you might want to list with Coal Banker. And the first is tradition, David. No company out there can compete with our tradition of 114 years. Uh, and I just think we set the standard for what real estate is all about. Teamwork is a big one for me. You know, I'm proud to be part of the Coal Banker King Thompson family in Columbus, Ohio. That starts at my branch, to our company, to our brand, 75,000 agents plus strong uh, global brand. And, and whether it's the agents, the staff, or, this, or the management team, uh, that's powerful. 
tools, right? What tools does your company provide for you as far as listing packs, buyer packs, guarantees, whatever those types of things may be. Technology, I think is a big one for today's consumers and Coal Banker's always been on the cutting edge of technology, even though we're, we're the oldest real estate company. We've always been cutting edge on technology with something like CBX and, and even back to the, the YouTube channel, right? And then, and then the, the fifth one I think is the knockout punch and that's training. And I, I'm very biased on that, David. Obviously I spent, you know, 14 years as the director of agent development and I've spoken at Gem Blue since 2007. But guys, this is a big one. And whether it's from your local office all the way up to Wendy Crane and her national team, uh, no company is going to provide the training and support. And so, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I've already made the decision on why I'm with the best company. And I think I think managers on the call and brokers on the call can use that same thing when talking to potential new agents to join the team. On uh, measure us on the five T's, and I think you'll realize that Cole Banker uh, brings that to the table. Love it. And everyone should be writing down or screen capturing or following up to get these five T's because this is a super useful talk track. And uh, from the king of alliterated lists, Sean Carpenter himself. Uh, Jan, you shared with me the other day a very interesting study and statistic that showed that being consistent actually helps build revenue, makes you more money. Share that. And you're on mute. While Jan is on mute, she'll be off very shortly. She's got a couple of great keys on uh, this recent study that she's done about how actually it builds revenue, creates increased revenue the more consistent you are. And that's why some of the biggest brands that you see that are out there today are always consistent with their message, with their look, their feel, because they know that that associates them with being familiar with the end consumer. And that is what has helped them build more, build more revenue, creates trust, which we kind of touched on in the first point as well, builds awareness and recognition. So also it just makes you more memorable too. Everybody wants to be remembered for something. And if you're part of a brand, that is also helping you with that memorability as well, because people can make that association. Jan, are we got, we got you off the of mute there? Or not? She's mouthing to me that she's not, but that's okay. We will figure this out and we'll get back to her. Why don't we just wrap up some takeaways on tip number two and we'll get ready for some Q&A as well. So two takeaways for keep it consistent. One is very simple, seems obvious, but utilize consistent naming convention on your sites, on your social media to increase that brand recall. That way someone always knows where to look for you. Do you know the name Sean Carpenter? I just have to type in Sean Carpenter on Facebook or Twitter and I am going to find him. Second is consider how your design and message can flex and adjust to the specific platform. This was something that was key for, uh, for Cole Banker as a brand through our rebranding process was how is our design, how is our different elements going to be able to match the platform that we wanted it to be shown on. So make sure that you keep that in mind as you develop your own look and feel. We're going to toss it over to Jennifer Craig now, who's handling the Q&A. What are some of the questions that are coming in so far? I think I let's think go ahead and lead in more with the branding and the consistency. Um, so when we're talking about consistency amongst the branding, uh, what types of materials would you uh, would you like to see maybe for a starter package for an agent that's just getting started? Sean, you want to go ahead and take that one? Yeah, I think use what you already have, David. You know, first of all, uh, Je Jessica and I agree on this 100%. You know, make sure that you're you're consistent across all the channels, whether it's hard copy deliverables that you might leave behind at a listing presentation or on your social media uh, avatars. Is it the same face? If I look up Jessica or Jessica looks me up on the channels, is it the same look and feel? You know, people get, a lot of people try and get a little too creative and they put maybe a yard sign or they put a picture of their dog or they put a picture of their, their kids. Well, if I go to your website and I'm not sure if that's your kids, I, how do I know I'm on the right page? And so I think once again, being consistent across all the channels, making sure your tagline doesn't change and you're obviously having your contact information is huge as well. And I have a good tip if I can hop in for a new agent. 
So something that we did um, very early on in the process before we maybe were to the point where we were, I mean, now we have branded, you know, letterhead folders, everything for our team in specific, but um, we did a lot with stickers. And so we did a lot of logo stickers where we would take simple white glossy folders and have that sticker on there. And so we were able to use that in a lot of different, it may sound silly, but for a new agent, that's a really good thing to look into and buy with your logo. You can do circles, you can do rectangles, whatever, different things that you're able to use on different stuff, if you will, if you're not really at the point where you can go out and say, okay, I'm going to have my own you know, team folders and this and that. Um, so just a little tip there. That is a super useful tip. I think also you should, if you're part of a, a, a brand or a company, rely on them to help you get started. What are the tools that they have to offer? Don't try and recreate something new just because, oh, I got to have something that is just fancy and new. No, other people have used it before and found success. Get those building blocks and foundational elements underway and then move from there. What's next, Jennifer? All right, so when we're talking about consistency, just to kind of reiterate, um, so we're starting with, um, say, print materials. We're starting with um, folders. We're starting with listing presentations. Um, at what point in time would you recommend um, growing into um, branding options that are, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit more on the digital side? I mean, are you talking about... Um, Sorry, we, we were having some audio problems, but it sounds like we had them fixed. Um, what At what point, um, when it comes to branding your materials, would you recommend going onto the digital side as well? So it sounds like we're starting with print and growing into some additional social. Could you expand on that a little more? Can I? Yeah. Jessica, why don't you uh, jump in on that one as you've kind of grown your brand over from print to digital and, and done it effectively? Yes, yeah, I think from absolutely from day one. And if you are a seasoned agent or newer agent and you feel like you don't have this covered, don't freak out. It's okay. It's a perfect time right now to to look at this. But I think that it is it there is not a differentiation and there's not a time where you should have one or the other. I think that everything needs to blend simultaneously together. So you need to make sure that your digital platforms and what you're doing online um, are just as consistent and show that brand just like your print um, materials do. So I don't think that one, I always say it's kind of like, you know, like a pie or an, you know, consumers are out there looking at all different sources. And so you've got to make sure that you have, you know, that brand in all those different outlets and that consistency. If you're missing one piece to the pie, you can completely sort of fail, if you will, if your Instagram or your Facebook, you know, completely isn't in line with everything else that you're doing as far as branding goes. So I don't think one comes before the other. I think that they have to come together. Awesome. Um, how many, do we have time for another question? Uh, Sean yeah. was going to jump yeah, in. Yeah, David, let me, let, me, let me quickly just, risk, uh, you know, encourage people, begin with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey used to say, right? And, and think about what's the end consumer going to see on that digital branding, that digital marketing, because a lot of people are going to be looking at it on a, on a small screen. So obviously, is it mobily optimized, but does it tell a story? I think pictures and videos are much more what today's consumer wants than a 5,000 word description of what you do. That hey, is. am I back now, David? Hey, Jen's back on. Go ahead, take it away, Jen. Awesome. Hey, I, I just I missed a little bit. I had to log back on. Um, but I did want to say on Design Concierge, we do have a package and it's brand new. It's called Brand Boost. And it's basically designed for a new agent just wanting to take advantage of the basics. So it, it it's basically packaged together a custom logo, your custom business cards, your outlet email, your outlook email signature, your social media headers, your professional bio and and your bio in Moxie um, on the listing presentation. So it's um basically packaged together you order it as one package and we do all those items for you so that's also a good place to start if you're just wanting to if you're brand new into getting your brand set up nice one-stop shopping uh, Jen, let's do one more and then we'll jump back into the final two takeaways. Awesome. All right. So another great evolution from the uh, the branding and the big picture um, has to do with branding evolution. Uh, so in a crisis like we have going on right now, uh, what suggestions do you have for branding during times as if that we're all doing business in at the moment? 
I'll take that one. Uh, actually, very timely question, because uh, just as of yesterday, we had to adjust some of our own branding and messaging to make it uh, relevant to the current environment that we're in. So we updated our Guiding You Home campaign with a brand new end card to talk about home. It's more important now than ever, so stay home and stay healthy. And we've kind of tweaked some of our messaging. And I think what you have to do is you have to know your customer and your audience and who you're trying to connect with and what is the current uh, feeling of the local community that you're in. I've talked to a, a number of agents during this time and they've asked like, hey, what should I be sharing on social? What should my messaging, what should my marketing be right now? So now more than ever, you need to be an expert in the community. Someone they can rely on. What, what are the local businesses that are open and servicing? How can you help them out and fulfill some customer needs? What's going on with the local school systems? Uh, how can you help out those first responders in your local market? Be that community uh, navigator for your customers because that's what they want to know what's going on in our hometown and, and how can you best help them through this. I think it speaks to the point that Sean made earlier but how can you be that problem solver but instead of waiting for that problem to come anticipate what are those questions and be able to fulfill those needs. That is a fantastic question 20 points to Gryffindor for that one. Uh, let's jump back in and we'll finish out with our final two tips and then we'll get some more Q&A at the end. Real quick, we recently did at Cold Banker a study of survey of our agents who said and asked them, what are you guys working on right now amidst this current environment? And the number one answer was training, and that's what you all are doing here, but also the very topics in which we're talking about, prospecting, brand building, and what have you. And that brings us to tip number three. So we had to find your message, keep it consistent, and now pick a platform pick a platform and try to focus on doing that well. And both Jessica and Sean have some unique platforms that they've used to find some success. So Jessica, I'll start with you. I think most people got first introduced to you on YouTube. I know that's how I first found you, driving your car, doing a video, talking about what was going on in your local market. Why YouTube? Has it been successful? And do you still continue with it? Yes, YouTube has been just an amazing platform for us. So I started a video blog back in January of gosh, 2009. It's hard to believe it's been 10 plus years. But um, we so YouTube really gave me sort of a space to share with, you know, clients, friends, just the general public, um, my personality, my expertise, my knowledge and just experiences in real estate without having to say, hey, I'm a realtor. This is why you should use me you know, all the time. And so it created this really powerful um, thing that gave us um, the ability to connect with with potential clients and we would sit down and meet, you know, I would sit down for a listing appointment and somebody would say, oh my gosh, you know, I feel like I already know you. And so um, YouTube was huge for that. You know, over the years, we've consistently kept that up. We do listing videos and things as well. Um, we're, we're looking into doing some different things. We just try to do, do like a series of videos that like we just did wellness and real estate series. Um, but, you know, I think that what you talked about, um, we talked a lot about consistency and things earlier. I think that it is really, really important to not feel overwhelmed that you have to be on every social media platform, that you have to absolutely crush Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, a podcast. You, you cannot do it all. Podcast is a great you know, topic. We've been talking about this for over six months now as a team. You know, everybody's into the podcasting and different things. And we really kind of wrestled with, you know, jumping into it. Um, and we decided that we would just really stick with video, that that, that is our, our sort of go-to and that pulling in a podcast with it was just going to be too much for it to be sustainable and for us to continue doing it well. Um, but like on Instagram, for instance, we're able to use video um, through Insta stories and different things. So I think that is just really important, like you said, you know, choose a platform, but then making sure that the platforms that you're on or platform, you know, is you're doing it consistently and that your brand and image shows the same across everything. That's a really great point about, so you pick the platform, YouTube video was the was that mechanism by which you could be the most successful. And then you found other platforms that could use that strength to then build off of there with the Instagram stories. I think that's, that's important for all of us to think about how do we go and shift what we're good at to work elsewhere. And Sean, uh, my first introduction to you from like a platform standpoint, I believe was the Carps Corner blog, which is something that you still do today, which might be a, a lost art at this point, but why blogging and how has that worked for you? 
You know, it's kind of funny, David, as Jessica was talking, I started thinking in this time that, you know, we've been, you know, locked in our houses and people have been turning to two things. They've been turning to Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu video, and people have been turning to old fashioned books, right? Reading the word. And so I started blogging more than 12 years ago. I'm, I'm almost at a thousand blog posts and I've become a better writer over those years, David, as I've evolved and, 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 and focused my message. But it gives me a chance to, number one, get my thoughts in writing and also then create a chronological kind of journal of my thoughts and, and ideas and people on this call you don't need to blog about real estate you can blog about a hobby or an interest or your town it doesn't have to be in writing it can be through video it can be through pictures um, if you think about it, like an Instagram is kind of a blog but I've been blogging and I just you know my I write to my audience my audience is real estate agents managers but really, I, I don't always talk about real estate. I talk about life, David. I talk about how I built relationships and solved problems and, and had fun. And I talk about my kids and my travels and my hobbies and my interests. And so it's just been a great way for me to get my ideas out and tell my story, which I know you and I are such big believers in story. And Jessica tells her story through video. I, I do it through the written word. And I use pictures and, and examples on that. You know, you uh, the relationship word that that's part of your your model, build relationships, is definitely something that you're doing through your blogging platform, and it's expressed because you do talk about things that allow people to get connected to you. Um, but I feel like in this blog post right here about planting seeds, that's on the screen, it's a great one that you just put together on Monday as well. It has another wonderful little alliterated list that is super useful. You want to go ahead and share that with us. Yeah, so David, when I got back into sales, when I left the director of training role and went back into sales and opened up Sean Speak so I could travel around the country and share with agents, I needed to start doing what I taught agents for 14 years to do. I needed to teach them how to put seeds in the ground each day, right? Hoping that they would turn into a relationship, which could turn into a contract, which could turn into a closing and then repeat and referral business. And so I, that day I, I went back to an independent contractor status, David. I, I had to come up with some way to force myself to do it. And so I came up with what I call the, the 4-H club. And it's just, a, once again, a little alliteration that I use. But the, when I go in the office every day, and what I've been doing the last 30 days here working from home is I get in the office and the first thing I do is I do five handwritten notes. That's the first stage. So five handwritten notes to people in my sphere, former clients, or people I need to send a thank you note to. Guys, we know at this time, we've been looking out the window when the Amazon driver drives by, the FedEx truck drives down the street, or the mailman comes to our door. And if we check our mailbox and there's something handwritten in there, we're going to open it first. We're going to have, feel a shot of adrenaline and emotion. We're probably going to read it a second time, maybe leave it on the counter for our spouse or partner to read. So five handwritten notes every single day. Then I do the hot sheet, David. I run the hot sheet for my local town. I go into the MLS to see what the new listings are, what the price changes are, what the end contracts and the closings are. Number one, to keep my pulse on the market. And number two is if I know somebody that lives within a two or three block radius of that property, then I'm going to give them a phone call, a text message, or an email from the MLS system, just letting them know about the property in their area. When they think real estate, I want them to think me. The third thing is I do my happy birthdays. I log into Facebook for the first time of the day, and I, I see who is having a birthday. I send them a message on Facebook right on their wall, or if they're close friends of mine, I pick up my phone and I send them a video text message right? Just a, a, a little personalized message to them wishing them happy birthday. And then you'll see the last thing I do is what's called my high fives. So I'm already on Facebook. I scroll over to the news feed and I scroll through the news feed and I like five people's comments. I comment on five people's posts. I jump onto Instagram and I comment on five people's stories or posts. I go over to Twitter and I comment or retweet five people's tweets. And then I send five random text messages. Uh, have a great day, a funny GIF, a, a meme, a picture, whatever it may be, just five little simple things. And then once I've done that, David, once I've put my seeds in the ground, which could turn into a harvest next week, next month, next year, then I go get my morning coffee, whether it's at Starbucks or whether I go into the kitchen now while I'm at home and make carp bucks, uh, right? And, and it's just a, so if, think about this, Dave, if every day I did that, if Jessica does this every single day, that's 500 notes, let's say three people in the neighborhood that have, we're near the property, 12 birthdays and 25 touches in my high fives. That's 45 touches before nine o'clock in the morning. And if you think about it, only three of them were about real estate. Only the ones about the hot sheet were real estate related. And it wasn't even me selling. It was just me trying to get top of mind awareness in people's minds so that when they think real estate, 
whether it's later today, whether it's next week or next year, or when someone at the water cooler or gas station talks about real estate, they think of me. So the 4-H club is just something that everyone on this call can be doing tomorrow morning when they wake up. And you're using, you can use your platforms, whichever one that you're choosing to focus on to execute on this as well. That's what I love about it. It's flexible. It's not specific to one person. It's building those relationships and staying top of mind. So let's wrap up some takeaways real quick. And we'll go to the final and fourth tip. So here, dedicate some time, even just a few minutes, five, 10 minutes to build your influence on the platform of your choice, but set a goal for it as well. Make plans to measure it. See how it's working. Is it not? Are you hearing back from people? Whatever it is, let's see if you're winning or losing by using that platform. And if you've always wanted to try something new, guess what? Now is the time to do it. So don't be afraid to explore. Just dabble in a couple of things. You don't have to go full bore into it. And that brings us to the fourth tip of the day when it comes to branding. And that is borrow from the best. Find brands that inspire you. And Jim, let's start with you. You've got a brand that I know of, but I can't say I am uh, very personally connected to, but it's still a very good one. Why don't you go ahead and take it away? Well, that's just too bad, David. We need to get you some golf shorts. Um, I actually really like the, a brand called Lululemon. And most women will know Lululemon because if you are into yoga or working out, it's just a really, they're well-made clothes and you feel good in them. But what I like about the branding is they're very consistent. So basically, they everything from the homepage, which you can see, to their Twitter page, to anything they do on their website about promoting themselves in the community is their clothing really identify with the people wearing their clothing. So they are involved in festivals that promote healthy living and working out and being healthy. And they're really creating a culture. And that's really what I like about it. They're creating a feeling around their brand. So to me, I just I just think they do a really great job and I'm happy to um, be an endorsement for them. The idea of creating a culture, they're, they're, not, they're not trying to get everyone to be part of the Lululemon brand, but they're saying, here are the folks that we want to focus on that we want to be part of our community and our culture. They're focused on that. And until you shared this screenshot with us, I did not realize that they had a men's line. So I will be checking them out later on this afternoon after this call. But Jessica, a brand that you like to borrow from, from is one that is near and dear to my heart and my wallet. Uh, go ahead and share that. Yes, so Starbucks, um, I have a slight just a slight um, iced green tea obsession, but unfortunately right now, as we can see on the screen, I'm not being able to feed that um, obsession. But the thing about Starbucks, so when we talk about branding and marketing, we're constantly, um, our team is also talking about the client experience. And I think that that is such a huge important factor. And when you're thinking about branding and your messaging is to really think about what that experience is for anybody that works with you. And so I feel like a company such as Starbucks, you know, they're really big on making sure that that experience is the same so that you know, when you go order whatever, you know, drink you're ordering or whatever, that it's going to be consistent and it's gonna be the same, that the process and the experience is gonna be the same and gonna be consistent. And they do that with the really well, the brand, you know, the branding is, is really good. So I think that that's why a company like Starbucks, um, I like because I feel like it's twofold where you have the outside brand and image and you also have that experience as well. And speaking of client experience, like now is a good time um, to really sit and look at your, um, you know, what your systems are. So do you have checklists in place? So we're really, really big on checklists and systems and making sure that, you know, when a new listing comes in, there's a specific checklist. And if it's handed off, you know, to, you know, a marketing director, or whatever that system is, that those things are checked so that that experience is exactly the same for each client um, that, that we have. And it, it works really, really well. But I think that's a good thing that you could work on right now is, um, you know, that branding and those systems and getting those checklists and things in place to create that perfect um, or, or same client experience over and over and over again. Branding as a client experience is so important. And while we focus on how do things look and the design or whatever, that experience you have with a brand is really what's going to get people coming back. I think that's a really critical point to, to bring home. Sean, uh, you have an affinity for brands that have a very simple message and have like a signature thing about them. Why don't you go ahead and take it away? 
Yeah, you know, Dave, when you see the golden arches at McDonald's, you know what you're going to get, right? When you when you when you hear Toby Keith sing "Red Solo Cup," right? Something so simple that you can re remember it. Um, when I see blue shoes, David, I think of David Marine. I think of David at Gem Blue events, wearing his blue shoes on stage um, and representing the brand that he that he passionately cares about. You know, so what is that thing that's going to earn you? And I said it before: top of mind awareness. Right, 1.4 million members of the National Association of Realtors, 330 million people in the United States. That's one realtor for every 235 people. How are you going to make sure you stand out when someone thinks real estate? And so, David, it's 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 coming up with that signature thing, that that tagline, that branding, that color scheme, the videos, the blog, the whatever it may be, so that when someone thinks real estate, they think you. But, but it, it shouldn't just be real estate, David, because everyone on this call and everyone who's listening to this isn't just a realtor. They're also a mother or a father. They're a spouse or partner. They're a, they're a child or they're a, they're, a, you know, they're, a, they're a community member. They're a member of a church or house of worship. What is that thing? So, David, I, I'm in real estate. I'm also a father. As you know, I'm also a Florida Gator, right? I went to school at the University of Florida. I'm a beer drinker. I'm a Tom Petty fan. So if somebody hears, I got a, I got a text from a buddy of mine who was in Seattle, and he texted me late at night. He says, hey, Carp, wish you were here. Tom Petty cover band playing in the bar we're at, which means when they heard Tom Petty, they thought of me, which means I got some little bit of top of mind awareness for who I am and what I do. And if real estate's part of that, here's a great example, David. Let's say Jessica's at the gym when, when, when we're back to business as usual and one of her fellow workout person walks in and says hey jessica i saw your listing the other day on jackson street and jessica thinks to herself well i don't have a listing on jackson street oh that's right my friend jan has a listing on jackson street but that means that that person saw the coal banker sign in the yard on jackson street then they saw jessica they thought hey that must be your sign that's top of mind awareness I got, a, I got a call a couple of years ago, David, from someone who says they saw my ad on ESPN. Now, I don't have an ad on ESPN, but you know what? Cole Banker was partners with Baseball Tonight, a, a show on ESPN, and they had the Cole Banker demo field. You remember that, right? When Carl Ravitch would say, hey, let's, let's look at that game that happened with the Mets tonight, and let's go to our Cole Banker demo field, which means one of my clients saw that little segment thought of Sean Carpenter and then saw me and said, hey, that's your commercial. That's what we're aiming for, guys, is top of mind awareness. Coming off mute there real quick. That is, I love that association. And I do think of you whenever I see the Florida Gators on, I'm like, oh, I wonder if Sean's watching this game. Oh, wait, I don't need to think if he's watching this game. He's definitely watching this game. And I think each of us, whether it's YouTube videos with Jessica and kicking that, or anytime I think about the Carolinas and meet on the coast there, I think of that. And Jan with design as well, because I know she's doing some tremendous work with design concierge and the whole creative studio there. So those associations and what you are connected with speaks to your brand and also how you can stay memorable. Well, let's whip up some takeaways for the fourth point, and then we'll head back to some Q&A. So one, look for inspiration everywhere. It's all around you. You experience it every day. You may just not be realizing it, but what are the brands that you love? What do they do well that makes you want to be connected with them that you think relates to who you are? And then draft off the brand you're with. For those of you who are with Cole Banker, this is absolutely something you should be doing because of that name recognition, heritage, history, some of the things that Jessica, Jan, and Sean all talked about. And even right now, we just released yesterday, brand new campaign we're calling Hometown Heroes, connected to our Guiding You Home and a rebranding campaign to uh, deliver a message of hope and thanks to those who are on the front lines. You can go over to BrandServe and download some of these custom graphics right now. You can get there through CB Exchange or Desk. And of course, we've got branded apparel at ColeBankerStore.com and any design ideas that you need to help connect you closer to the amazing brand that you're a part of or can be found in the ColeBanker Lookbook. So that wraps up our four key takeaways for branding. Define your message, keep it consistent, pick a platform and borrow from the best. Jennifer Craig, what other questions are lying in wait in the Q&A? 
All right, so I have a few questions that are kind of all over the map. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with some of our key takeaways here. Uh, so in summary, it sounds as if a solid brand is built by having a consistent visual experience, but also having a consistent customer experience and also having a personal culture involved. Um, so again, back to a new agent question. When you're evaluating all three components, um, what are some questions that you can ask yourself in order to start to frame out what your brand should be. And then also, if you have an existing brand, um, how would you move on from evolving um, and, and growing the brand given those three factors? Jen, let's start with you on that one and then we'll head over to Sean and Jessica. Is there some an approach that you take when you're working with agents through design concierge or otherwise that can help them guide them through this path? Yes. So I mentioned a little earlier, so we, we did this with Alex Pink, for instance, and she is a fairly new agent and she's been in, in different businesses through her life. And so she was really looking to build a brand with couple bankers. So we went through a series of questions and the team gets together. And some of the questions that I had mentioned earlier, we start out with trying to define the person that you are. What do you like? We, sh we show you some things. Tell us what you like in a logo when you see a logo. You know, what type of logo? Do you like a word mark? Do you like a monogram logo? Um, what kind of colors do you feel that represent you? What three brands do you love and why? And how to de best describe your brand to a friend? How do you, when, you, when you talk about who you are, just like some of the things that Sean talked about in his community and who he's known for, um, like what are those things? And we start with just a list of questions like that. And then it kind of starts defining things. And that doesn't mean you have the answer, but it gives us an opportunity to start um, designing some things and then you react to it and then you define from there. So that's, it's, it's a whole lot of things, but I think it, it starts with the top of what you said, David, where it's not just a logo, it's how you present yourself in your community, how consistent you are. There's just a lot of different things that go into building your brand, so. David, you know, a couple of things that Jan asked in the question itself, that sometimes the answers are in the questions. Two words she mentioned, personal and experience. What I would challenge the person who asked the question or anyone who's thinking about this is, what are the experiences you've had that you enjoy going back to? And don't necessarily look inside the real estate vertical, look at the experiences you enjoy because our consumers don't think of real estate 24 seven the way we do because we're in the business. But you know what they think of 24 seven? They go to Starbucks every day, they watch Netflix, they get, on, they get in their Ford car, they use their Apple device, they go on Amazon to order stuff. What is that experience and how can you capture that beginning to end experience and put those little checkpoints and, and memorable touches along the way because people aren't looking for great service, they're looking for a memorable experience. Can I hop in with one thing? Yes, please. So um, there is a book, I, I totally agree with that, and I think it's really important to look at other brands, but look at what really, really sort of gets you excited about different brands that you like. And I think that the whole goes back to the authentic authenticity factor of it to make sure that it feels, whatever your logo is, your brand, you know, it needs to feel like you um, but there's a book called um, e-myth revisited and it is a great book just about entrepreneurship but it talks about systems and different things and really truly being an entrepreneur and it, it hits on a lot of stuff about just um, that client experience and really setting up your business that way so i would recommend highly recommend um, that book check that out um, no matter where you are in your business and i probably now would be a great time to reread that Jessica, can you repeat the name of the book so we can get that put into the commentary and put into the notes? Yes, the book is called E Myth, and then I think I guess it's called E Myth Revisited. And, Michael Gerber, um, Michael Gerber's good, author. Good fact on that one is that was recommended to me many many years ago by Danny Hertzberg of the team we all know, the Jills, which they do a fantastic job at branding, and um, it's just a really really good really good book. Excellent. That actually segues us really nicely into the next question. Uh, so for an individual agent that's also part of a team, how do you find a balance between branding agents individually, but also branding the bigger picture of the team, but also staying cohesive with the larger brand, such as the company? 
I can hop back in on this one. Um, so we really make sure that everything that we're doing as a team has that consistency and that our team members are able to share those same messages in that same way. And so that has evolved for us tremendously. You know, we have a marketing director on our team now, which makes things a lot different than it was for many, many years when I was doing, you know, all the social and things on my own. Um, but we really try to make sure that all of our team members are, you know, that there's consistency in the photography. And so say somebody's promoting themselves, we may do a photo of myself and that team member, you know, on that postcard or on that mailing. We make sure that so our email signatures are all um, super particular about just having that consistency. So everyone's email signature is exactly the same, meaning it's their name in the same font, the same color, the same size, and it's the same order as far as website, phone number, whatever it is. And so I think it's just consistency that way and making sure that you're providing that to your team members. And if you are an individual on a team, that you're able to, um, you know, use that team material and promote yourself, but making sure that it's consistent um, throughout. Jen, you deal with teams uh, from a design perspective as well uh, and working with them. Do you have uh, tips on this on how you guys handle things when working with teams? Well, it's funny that Jessica would say that because we just had a uh, order come in with uh, Martha Thorne out of our uh, Tampa Bay area uh, office, and she actually has 16 team members. So we're doing their e-signatures, um, just like Jessica suggested, with Martha Thorne's colors and, and exactly alike. So I think the same, uh, the same um, th theory exists that we try to make sure that you look alike and that there's no division in the brand so that the person who's buying you is is buying that team and that team experience that team that they've chosen to do business with but you know i did want to also i know that i got cut off but that the thing about consistency i, I found that stat and it said the average revenue increase attributed to brand consistency is 23 percent so being consistent in your branding and choosing to blog at the same times or do your YouTube at the same times, um, that is, it, it makes money for you. And choosing consistent brand colors can increase your recognition up to 80%. So that's a huge statistic for our agents and their business. So I just, I wanted to make sure we uh, stress that since I got cut off there, but I think that's a, a big point to remember. Uh, brand consistency. I can't speak enough about it. And uh, you asked a question earlier about are you a fan of what type of style? I'm a big fan of, of monogram logos, if you haven't noticed. But I think we're just about at time. So I wanted to say thank you to Sean, to Jan, to Jessica, and also to the woman behind the scenes asking all the questions, Jennifer Craig. Thank you for being a part of this today. Let's sw swing it over to Wendy Crane to wrap us up with some important takeaway points at the end. Wendy. Thanks, everyone. I think we're good. Jen, thank you very much for taking questions. Um, I just want to remind everyone today that Operation Outreach is lasting out through the entire month of April. Through Operation Outreach, Coldwell Banker agents across the world are committed to spreading kindness by setting a daily goal and tracking the contacts they're making via RE scoreboard. I do want to congratulate our current leader, Crystal Thomas. She has scheduled five appointments and gotten eight referrals simply as a byproduct of reaching out to her sphere through Operation Outreach. Congratulations to you, Cheryl. That is awesome. You can find out more about Operation Outreach by visiting the CBU Learning Center. If you're an affiliate or on the company-owned side, you can go to Sales Pro and just search Operation Outreach. This Thursday, April 16th, write it down. I'm going to say it again. This Thursday, April 16th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our Coldwell Banker President Ryan Gorman is going to be holding a real estate state of the union specifically for home buyers and sellers. Again, this is for your home buyers and sellers. Make sure that you take advantage of this opportunity. Invite your friends, your family, your past clients, any potential future clients. For those of you who know Ryan, he is an exceptional speaker and leader, but he's also a husband a father, a friend, and a homeowner, and he is dedicated to making sure that we are all armed with the truth at a time when myths and fear are paralyzing our nation. You do not want to miss this. I'm going to say it again, Thursday, April 16th, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.
And that is a wrap for today's session. A huge thank you again to our panelists, David, Jan, Jessica, Sean, so much fantastic information today. Thank you to the production team, to the studio and marketing for the collaboration. And of course, to all of you who participated in today's session. As a quick reminder, the recording of today's session, along with the materials and the presentation and all of the recordings from our past education expos can be found at our blog at blog.coldwellbanker.com by searching education expo as a reminder this series will pick back up again in may we will be broadcasting live the first thursday of every month at 2 p.m eastern standard time Thank you, you guys. Uh, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Hopefully that was great value for you. That was fantastic for me. I know I love some of the, 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 the four or the five T's or the four H's or the, you know, all the different alphabet soup. That was awesome. Talk about getting back to the basics and really doing what we know we need to do in order to lead and be present right now. Um, obviously a lot of similar talk tracks. I love the idea of drafting off of the brand. Let the brand, let Coldwell Banker be the brand and you be the image. Again, please reach out to your uh, marketing department and your uh, design concierge if you would like any of those things uh, for you. Talk to you later. Bye.